Okay, we're now on to Rn. And I think that by now you know exactly what to expect. And you should be able to at least take a crack at these problems on your own. You should try to explain why these decomposition problems have no solutions. But before I ask you to pause the video and try to answer these questions, I would like to repeat a very important point I made in earlier videos. These problems offer an excellent opportunity to practice treating all different kinds of objects on their own terms. We started this chapter with geometric vectors, as we always do. And then we talked about lines and planes. Then we moved on to polynomials. And when we were talking about polynomials, we referred to their coefficients and their graphs and their roots. Well, now we're talking about elements in Rn, or R3. And what are elements in Rn? Well, they're just sets of numbers. So all we can talk about now is those numbers. We call them entries. So all we can refer to when discussing elements in Rn is their entries and relationships among them. That's it. Only concepts that apply naturally to Rn. It is particularly important not to so associate vectors in R3 with geometric vectors in the three-dimensional space. The analogy is certainly there, but this one-to-one -one correspondence that you may be used to from early exposure to these kinds of objects is actually detrimental to embracing the spirit of linear algebra. So if you have that unequivocal association between triplets of numbers and vectors in the three-dimensional space, you should try to break that association and really treat all objects on their own terms. Later in the course, we will actually rebuild that association between R3 and geometric vectors, actually between Rn and all vector spaces. But when we do it later in the course, we'll actually do it right. Okay, now on to the problems at hand. Now I'm actually asking you to pause the video and try to answer these questions on your own. Let's do it one problem at a time. So think about this first problem. It's not particularly hard. And try to figure out why this first decomposition problem has no solutions. Then come back and check with our explanation. Well, here it is. If you look at the decomposition vectors carefully, maybe you don't even have to look at them quite so carefully, you will notice that the middle entry is zero. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because if you take two such vectors and you add them together, you'll get another vector that has that very same property. And if you multiply a vector like that by a number, the resulting vector will once again have that property. So we conclude that any linear combination of these vectors will have the property that the middle entry is zero. That's all you can get by linear combinations of these three vectors. Now, does the target vector have that property? It does not. The middle entry is 4. Therefore, this vector cannot be represented as a linear combination of these three vectors. And we have thus solved the first impossible decomposition problem in R3. And it was pretty simple. The second problem that we're about to discuss is just a little bit harder. And finally, the third problem will be definitely more interesting than the first two. So I'm particularly looking forward to this one. In fact, this third one is so nice that we'll use these three vectors or three vectors like them quite often. They're very, very good for examples. But let's address the second problem. Go ahead, pause the video and try to answer why the second decomposition problem has no solutions. Well, here is my reason. Now you have to maybe look at the vectors a little bit more carefully. And you will notice that the second entry in each vector is five times the first entry. Minus 20 is five times negative four. And of course, five is five times one. Is that significant? Well, yes, it is significant. Because if you add any two vectors like that, and you should try it at least a couple times, you will get another vector that has the property that the second entry is five times the first. Let's try adding these two together. You will have minus 15 minus three. The property is preserved. 
Same thing with multiplication by numbers. If you take any one of these vectors or any vector that has that property and multiply it by any number, any number whatsoever, the resulting vector will once again have that property. Therefore, any linear combination of these vectors will have the property that the second entry is five times the first. Once again, that's all you can get by linear combinations of these videos. Now we'll look at the vector on the, in this case, left-hand side, the target vector. Does it have that same property that the second entry is five times the first? It does not. Therefore, it is impossible to represent this vector by a linear combination of these vectors. And we have just answered the second impossible decomposition problem in R3. So far, so good. These were pretty easy. This last one is a little bit more difficult to see and don't be disappointed if you are not able to figure it out by sight. So pause the video and give it a shot. Well, here's my explanation. And once you see it, you will not be able to unsee it. This will be the sort of pattern, although this is not a course in pattern recognition, but sometimes noticing relationships is very helpful. So the relationship that's relevant here is that the middle entry is the average of the other two. Two is the average of one and three. Five is right between four and six. And eight is, once again, the average of seven and nine. And once again, it's the kind of property that survives linear combinations. Take any two vectors that have that property. Let's do these two. Add them together. And will the resulting vector also have that property? Well, I don't think it's obvious until you try it. So let's try it. Adding these two vectors together, we get 11, 13, 15. 11, 13, 15. Is 13 the average between 11 and 15? Yes, it is. So we see that this property at least survives addition. What about multiplication by numbers? Well, take any one of these vectors, multiply it by a number, and see if the middle entry is still the average of the other two. Uh, let's pick an easy number. Let's multiply this middle one by 10. And we have 40, 50, 60. Is 50 the average of 40 and 60? Why, yes, it is. So this property also survives multiplication by numbers. Therefore, it is preserved under linear combinations. To put it in other words, any linear combination of these three vectors will result in a vector that has the property that the middle entry is the average of the other two. And now we can test the vector on the other side, the target vector, against that property. Does it have the property that the middle entry is the average of the other two? It does not. Therefore, it is not possible to represent this vector by a linear combination of these three vectors. Okay, so we have completed all three impossible decomposition examples in Rn. In the next video, we'll start talking a little bit more generally about what makes the kind of property that helps answer these impossible decomposition problems. What are examples of properties that are significant? And what are examples of properties that are irrelevant, although they may be quite striking? So I'm being a little bit cryptic, but you'll see what I'm talking about in the next video.